Hey guys, Nitsahone here with another top 10 list. I post one of these on my channel every Friday and I try to keep them topical. Um, Shadows of Innistrad has been fully spoiled as we know. It's, you know, pre-releases have happened. And um, now we can sort of look at the cards and think about them for Constructed, uh, which I've already done some of. Last week I talked about the best cards that I think are the most likely to see play in constructed formats from Shadows over Innistrad. This week we're doing something a little bit different and I'm looking at cards that will be better in Shadows over Innistrad Standard. And what I mean by that is after the rotation occurs, it takes out Cons of Tarkir and Fate Reforged and brings in Shadows over Innistrad. Um, and I'm looking at cards that existed before Shadows over Innistrad but are better because of the rotation that's occurring, either because cards are moving out or cards are moving in. So let's go ahead and get started with the list. At number 10, I have a cool mythic from Dragons of Tarkir, Shore Crasher Elemental. Um, this is a rather powerful card that never really saw much play, and the reason for that was because everyone was playing multicolor decks, usually up to four colors because of the presence of fetch lands. Um, this is a common theme you're going to see. A lot of cards, I think, have improved uh, and become better in the new standard because uh, they were harder. They didn't weren't things people wanted to cast in the old standard because you wanted to play four colors. If you're playing four colors, you don't really want to be trying to hard cast a shore crasher elemental, and playing it face down really isn't all that great. But I think it's actually a pretty good finisher in a lot of control decks. It it avoids most removal, and of course, you know you can make its power and toughness basically whatever you need it to be uh, for one mana. Um, you know it's mostly just going to be a three mana beater and good as a finisher in control decks. But I could see it being a better card in the new standard because more people are just going to be playing two color decks, even one color decks than they were previously. So on to number 10, where I have Evolving Wilds. Um, this card really hasn't been around uh, for at all in standard because once again, people had fetch lands, which were far better than Evolving Wilds. But with fetch lands rotating out because they were printed in Cons of Tarkir, Evolving Wilds becomes a lot better. People are still going to want to play Jace, Vryn's Prodigy. They're still going to want to get enough cards in their graveyard to flip him quickly. Evolving Wilds helps you do that. Evolving Wilds also helps you fix your mana base. Um, if you want to be playing a two-color deck even, you probably want a few Evolving Wilds. And if you're going to try to be stretching to three, which I don't know if it's going to be possible in this new standard, you definitely need Evolving Wilds. Um, with basically, just because the fetch lands are rotating, people are going to want Evolving Wilds. It may also be relevant if Delirium is something that'll be relevant in constructed play because it'll help you get there in terms of Delirium. So that's a card, Evolving Wilds, one that I think will improve in the new standard uh, because of the rotating out of fetch lands. Finally, we move to number eight, Ultimate Price. This is a card that I don't think is better because fetch lands are rotating out. I think it's better for a few reasons, though. Um, uh, the format previously did not have that many monocolored creatures. Uh, they were around, but some of the best big scary win conditions in decks were cards like Mantis Rider, who obviously Ultimate Price can't do a thing about, and Siege Rhino, another card that that decks uh, that Ultimate Price couldn't do anything about. Um, they're both gold, so obviously couldn't deal with it. It is worth noting Ultimate Price still cannot deal with Eldrazi, which is a deck in the format, so main boarding multiple ultimate prices probably isn't ideal but it's going to be a much better sideboard card and useful against more opponents um and i think that's important another reason i think it'll be better is because one of the most efficient removal spells in the format murderous cut is rotating out and black is going to be in need of a very efficient removal spell and i think ultimate price can fill that void effectively so that's what i have as the number eight card on my list of cards that will improve with the rotation that will occur with the release of shadows over innistrad at number seven, I have Risen Executioner. Um, this is a card I love. If you watch my channel, you know I've played a decent number of zombie decks, and he's been in various incarnations of modern zombie decks I've built. But I think it's finally time for him to be good in standard. Um, you know, he's a zombie lord who's efficiently costed for power and toughness, and you can also cast him from your graveyard if you need to. The reason I think he's going to be better is because of the fact that uh, a lot of support for zombies has just been printed in Shadows over Innistrad, and more will probably be printed in Eldritch Moon. Here's a few examples of that. We have Diagraph Colossus, a constructed power card, I think, because it's a 3-mana 2-2. Two, two. Gets bigger for every zombie in your graveyard, and not only that, every time you cast a zombie, you get another zombie. Uh, going wide with zombies is definitely what Risen Executioner wants to do. There's also, of course, Relentless Dead, who's even better than the Diagraph Colossus, as a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two, who has Menace. 
and you can pay one black anytime he dies to return it to your hand. And on top of that, you can, it, it's important to remember, use both of these abilities. You can also pay X to return another zombie creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you could pay four to return Risen Executioner, for example. And lastly, there's also Prized Amalgam. This is the one I'm probably the least certain about. But obviously it works well with Risen Executioner because it's a zombie. And because if you can cast your Risen Executioner from your graveyard, Prized Amalgam will quickly join him. So I think Risen Executioner is a card that will improve in strength, if not right now, will be better once Eldritch Moon comes out and we see all the support zombies are going to get in this block. So that's what I have at number seven. At number six, I have Silumgar's Scorn. This is a card that has seen a lot of play, actually, in Standard, but it's kind of gone out of favor uh, because, uh, once again, because uh, this time because the Battle Lands were printed, but the Battle Lands worked really well with, once again, say it with me, Fetch Lands. The Fetch Lands could fetch any Battle Land, which made four color decks a thing in Standard. You know, people called them Dark Jeskai or Mardu Green or all these things. Basically, they were all four color decks, uh, all four color mid range decks, basically. And now, because, and those four color decks couldn't cast Silengar Scorn very consistently in the early game but two color decks will be able to. Dragons decks are still going to exist. Um, dragons of Turkir is still in standard, and that's basically where all the best dragons were. Um, all the dragon lords are still legal in standard, and so a control deck, a dragon control deck, is still going to exist, and Silumgar Scorn is still going to be a very good card, and it'll be back to where it used to be in standard before everyone moved to four color decks. So that's my number six, Silumgar Scorn. At number five, I have Liliana Heretical Healer slash Liliana Defiant Necromancer. Um, some of the flip walkers, of course, from Magic Origins have seen play, um, of, most especially Jace, Friends Prodigy, and uh, Nissa, Fastwood Seer. I don't, I don't remember what her name is right now, but Nissa, uh, the one who searches your library for land from Magic Origins, who's a flip walker. Um, and Liliana, Heretical Healer, has not seen any play, really. Um, but I think she'll start to see some play. I could see her appearing in Collected Company decks. She's a very good creature. Um, she's, I mean, not creature, but she's an okay creature. When she flips, she makes a zombie to protect herself. But the thing that I think really seals her um, for being a good card in uh, Standard is the fact that Madness was introduced once again into Standard in Shadows over Innistrad. And her each player discards, ability become, discards a card ability becomes less symmetrical when you can cast cards with Madness. Um, there are two cards that I could see seeing play and constructed and just in Liliana's color of black that have madness. One of them is Asylum Visitor, um, a very good card because it can help you draw cards. Also works very well with Liliana because you're emptying your opponent's hand with her ability, while which will then make you be able to draw cards with Asylum Visitor, and you can discard it and you know pay it for its madness cost. And another one is Gissa's Bidding, which can make you four power of zombies for three if you're discarding it with Liliana. So basically, I think Madness is the major reason that Liliana it will be improved in the new standard. And that, I think, is good for Liliana. Um, from there, we move on to number four, uh, which we have Archangel of Tithes. This is a card I'm already pretty high, high on in the current standard. Um, I, if you watched my Budget MTG last month, I built a mono-white weenie deck. And, I, and Archangel of Tithes was sort of the curve topper. Um, for this budget MTG deck that, you know, is a competitive deck against fairly competitive against tier one, but on a budget is what my budget MTG deck videos are. And I think Archangel of Tides will see a lot more play once again, because fetch lands are rotating out between fetch lands and battle lands. Once again, as I've said, everyone is playing four, uh, four color decks because it was so easy to do so with the battle lands and with the fetch lands. Archangel of Tides never really broke into standard because she's so hard to cast in those decks. Um, where you really, it was easier for you to get three colors uh, of different colors, say Abzan colors, than it was to get three of the same color. And Archangel of Tides will be showing up, I think, because more people will be playing one and two color decks, definitely, and maybe even one color aggro decks. I could see White Weenie being an, an archetype in standard. I already built a fairly competitive White Weenie deck, and I think, uh, you know, in the hands of, you know, better deck builders, I think White Weenie will probably get to be even better with Archangel of Tides being an excellent curve topper because she makes it harder for your opponent to block while also being a threat in the air. So I think Archangel of Tides will see her stock rise in the new standard. At number three, we have another White Mythic. This one is Ojutai Exemplars from Dragons of Tarkir. Um, this card is a very strong card, a card that I like a lot. Uh, four mana, four, four is a great deal. And on top of that, it can do all kinds of other things you need it to do every time you cast a non-creature spell. 
either tapping creatures, giving itself first strike and lifelink, or saving it from a removal spell. Um, you may wonder why Ojutai Exemplars did not see much play in Standard, and I think the answer to that is Siege Rhino. Siege Rhino is a 4-mana four 4-5, four who is clearly better than Ojutai Exemplars because you don't even have to do anything to get its sort of Lightning Helix ability, and it has Trample, and they're both 4-mana, plus Ojutai Exem Exemplars cannot rumble with Siege Rhino, but Siege Rhino is rotating out. The best thing to do with 4 mana isn't going to be Siege Rhino anymore, and it might actually be something like Ojutai Exemplars. Ojutai Exemplars is an effective finisher in control decks, and should be, um, because you can play your removal spells and various other spells and get value out of them. You know, casting Anticipate at the end of your opponent's turn and tapping down your opponent's creature so your Exemplars can get in there is big. It getting Life Link makes it harder for your opponent to race you. First Strike also causes problems, and the fact that it can make itself... Dodge removal is extremely important. So I think Ojute Exemplars is a card that will benefit greatly from Siege Rhino rotating out of standard. At number two, I have Drana, Liberator of Malakir. Another mythic that's very strong. Not a white one, though, a black one. Three mana for a 2-3 flying first strike. Whenever she hits the opponent, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on each attacking creature you control. Because she has first strike, this means your other creatures all get bigger before they actually do combat damage, unless, of course, they also have first strike. Seems like a very strong card, but once again, it's a card that was held back by a card from Cons of Tarkir. Not Siege Rhino this time, but Mantis Rider. Mantis Rider was a better thing to do with three mana. That was an evasive threat, um, and it... Not only was it a better thing to do with the mana, but it also just completely negated Drana Liberator of Malakir as soon as it came down. And now Drana doesn't have as big of a flying threat to deal with. And one of the best thing, flyers you can pay for three mana, if not the best, is going to become Drana. And I think she'll become an important part of aggro decks. And it's worth noting there's also some vampire synergies that were introduced in Shadows over Innistrad. Most of them I don't think are competitive, but it's possible that Eldritch Moon will introduce to us some vampire synergies that are relevant for Drana, but for now, I think she's just a very good aggro creature in any sort of aggro deck that's packing black because of the massive amount of damage she can allow you and your team to do. And at number one, I have Jace Vryn's Prodigy slash Jace Telepath Unbound. Um, already an incredibly good card in standard, probably the best card in standard, but I think it's going to become even better. Jace is losing fetch lands, so he'll be harder to flip, but he's gaining madness cards. Um, Plus, as I said earlier, you can run Evolving Wilds in place of Fetch Lands to help you get there. But the introduction of Madness makes it so when you draw cards and discard a card, you're not really going to be losing a card anymore. There are several blue cards, just in Jace's colors, several other Madness cards in other colors, that are going to have the potential to be seen in competitive decks. One of these is, for example, Broken Concentration. If you're able... I mean, this is not one of the ones I see as the most likely, mostly because the Madness cost is so high, but... If you're able to make this work in a Jace deck, being able to discard a card and still counter a spell is a frightening effect. Um, you know, you can also just counter the spell with Broken Concentration. A card I think is more likely to be effective with Jace is Just the Wind, a card that is a good removal spell against aggro decks and slows them down while you can cast it very cheaply um, with, for its madness cost after discarding it with Jace. And another one that synergizes well with Jace is Nagging Thoughts. Ideally, you would want to be casting this as an instant speed spell, um, which you can do with Madness. And Nagging Thoughts will allow you to uh, discard it and add two cards to Jace so it's easier for him to flip because you get to put one card in your graveyard and you also get to draw a card so you get some good card selection. And that's, of course, only in Jace's colors. There are several other cards with Madness that have been introduced that would be good with him. Fiery Temper, for example, discarding that and bolting something is a frightening thing that a blue-red control deck with Jace at its core could be doing. Um, and that's just, you know, for now, whereas once Eldritch Moon comes out, we will be getting even more standard, uh, even more cards in standard with Madness, uh, most likely anyway. So that's my list, my top 10 cards that I think will improve with the introduction of Shadows over Innistrad into standard and the subtraction of Cons of Tarkir and Fate Reforged. Let me know what you think of the list. If you think I overrated something, underrated something, uh, anything you want to talk about with this list, it's very good for all of us to sort of take part in these conversations because it helps us think more about the future of the format. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.